Imagine leaving everything behind after seeing your country torn apart by a civil war. Last Monday, 81 Syrian refugees, many who've been living in camps, arrived in Nottinghamshire. Helping to resettle them is Syrian-born Razanza Hawari, who now lives in Gamston. She's a co-founder of the national charity Hand in Hand for Syria. I think for them it's just like another planet, uh, especially what they've been through as well. So they're not coming from normal situation, they're coming from war situation, which is really tough on them. So some of them, they came from tent and they suffer like no electricity, no water for quite a long time. So, and you know, to put them in a new, new place with a new language and, and new with everything, that must be really hard for them. I have some families still in Syria and the situation are really getting even worse now. The UK government has pledged more than a billion pounds in humanitarian aid to Syria. 5,000 refugees and asylum seekers have been taken in since 2011 and a further 20,000 people will come over the next five years. Local councils have been at the forefront in helping to manage the crisis. We took the view in Gedling and across Nottinghamshire that we wanted to play our part in helping those who are in most need. And clearly these people are in an unthinkable situation uh, and we wanted to play our part. So in Gedling we're taking three families and there are other families being uh, housed across Nottinghamshire. Some of these people have got no possessions, some of them have had no home for the last three or four years. Fireman Brendan Woodhouse is normally saving lives here, but recently he rescued a baby girl from drowning in Greece. He was helping refugees as they came onto shore in Lesbos, but the overcrowded boat they were in capsized. I swam as fast as I could. I got there. Um, and the, really lucky, the very first one that I came across was this little bundle of blankets. I turned it over and it was this baby that had been lying face down in the water. Um, I looked at it and its, its eyes were in the back of its head and it wasn't breathing. It was as white as could be. Uh, how old was this baby? She was five months old. I later found out the name was Suin, a real person. I thought, well, we'll get her back to the shore mm. and she's got a chance. So I put her on my chest and I did backstroke. I had to weave in and out of all the people that I'd swam past on the way. I was pumping with my right arm and pulling the water behind me with my left arm. One of the things you teach you as a medic is to give five rescue breaths to infants that aren't breathing. Mm -hmm. So I went to do that and on the second breath, she started to sick up the water and within a second she was screaming, which was... Just an incredible moment. The Home Office announced yesterday it's working with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees to resettle more children in the UK. It's a move welcomed by immigration solicitor Deirdre Sheehan. When you have ISIS or Daesh, when they invade towns, there's often a lot of panic around that, so people are fleeing very, very quickly from their villages. And I've seen children just get completely separated in the rush from the village. Often it's late at night when Daesh come to the villages as well. One boy told me about being in his pyjamas and it wasn't until many days later that somebody actually took him to somewhere so he could actually be out of his pyjamas. I can't imagine for a child. Ezzedine Osman is a refugee who's been in Nottingham just over two years. He left Eritrea, a country which borders Sudan and Ethiopia, to escape a dictatorship and compulsory military service. Like thousands in his position, it was a tough decision to leave his homeland. And the moment you start, you make this journey, your chance of survival is 50-50. We know it. We know it at some point. We might end up, uh, you know, drowned in the sea or killed by somebody or, you know, kidnapped by, you know, gangsters or something. But uh, comparing to what we've been through and that we, where we came from, we feel there's a sense of freedom. The destruction in Syria has created millions of refugees, many who've had their homes destroyed and now living in camps. Some people, like the Al Saudi family from Damascus, have been fortunate enough to escape. They were brought to Nottingham via the United Nations Vulnerable Persons Relocation Scheme. A lot of people is killing and they did and uh, and, uh, and there are a lot uh, of people from my family that are dead in this war. Really? Is that yes. close family members and people like your auntie, uncle, people like this? Yes, it's like this. The family are living near the Arboretum and are happy with their new home. Mr and Mrs Al Saudi speak very little English and are currently enrolled in classes, but they wanted to say a few words. Are you happy here in Nottingham? Are you yes. happy? Yes. 
Yes, yes. Yes, I'm having a thing. I'm having a thing. I like the revolt. Uh, very nice. Not Many organizations in Knotts have come together to support the new families. The Karimia Institute in Radford has been putting on free social events and English classes for the refugees. Uh, what I've noticed is uh, speaking to the children, uh, the teenagers and the men in particular is, um, you know, they f feel um, grateful to, I'm sure, to the British government, you know, that they feel that this is really uh, you know, something wonderful that has happened to them, you know, saved their lives and given them, given them an opportunity for a, a bright future. Volunteers from the East Midlands Solidarity Group are preparing for the big April collection, where items like food, clothes and tents are collected here in this warehouse in Radford and taken to refugees in camps in Calais and Dunkirk. There's a warehouse in Calais called La Berge, where they give goods to, out to the refugees in the camps in Calais and Dunkirk and also provide food for the refugees there. So I've spoken to them and they've told me what they need. So what we're after are three to six person tents, sleeping bags, blankets, rucksacks, tins of chickpeas, tomatoes, kidney beans, um, also ring, t ring pull tins of fish, bags of rice and, um, fruit and dried fruit and nuts. Just as an example, when we arrived there last time at, at La Berge, um, the, they were cooking over 2,000 meals a day and they had run out of chickpeas. And the chickpeas which they collected from Nottingham last time fed people that day. Many members of the group have been to the camps and witnessed firsthand the difficult conditions the refugees endure. I've been um, many places and I've seen many things but I'd never actually seen anything quite as horrific as the Dunkirk camp. When we first went there it was just so awful. Uh, Calais refugee camp, I, I guess the nearest thing I can say it was a bit like a very uh, early frontier town, you know, people had actually got themselves together and built little cafes and things and, uh, but there was an awful lot of squalor. In Germany, we've been uh, distributing vital aid uh, in Frankfurt train station, in uh, Wiesen, temporary shelter home. We've been providing uh, food, um, and, and we're also now distributing SIM cards. You know, people you know need to communicate back home because many people have lost their lives along the way, and they have no way of informing them, you know, whether they are safe or secure. So, so that was an urgent need. The government hasn't been able to provide them with SIM cards, so that's what we've been doing lately as well figures in Germany uh, are 160,000 they've already taken in. France have announced maybe I think 20 or 25,000 and England being more or less you know similar sort of country in terms of population has also said it will take 20,000 over five years. Do you think we, we can I, cope with that? Europe can cope? I think we do have the capacity I mean we can see that Nottingham City is uh, generous enough. Right. So uh, even full upstairs? Com completely full, completely full. I mean here this has already been sorted. We've got uh, tents and grand mats in this section and we have you know, bedding in this section and we've tried to sectionalize, you know, departmentalize a lot of the goods. You know, over there we have food and water. Next we have um, more grand mats and tents, men's clothes, girls and boys clothes. How, uh, how many like volunteers and staff members have been um, sorting all this out? It's, it must have been a big team effort. Well on one weekend we had 50 volunteers. I mean Calais Action Group to be honest with you they've been fantastic and they have a lot of you know mm. voluntary support. Our volunteers have also been been involved and you know we've had up to 50 people on one day. The first thing you see when you walk into the Archbishop Cranmer C of E school in Aslockton is a pile of coats. Children here have been collecting them for about a week and storing them at a nearby farm. More than 5,000 have been donated so far. The idea came from Year 6 pupil Inka Wilkinson, who was touched by images of Syrian refugee children enduring the harsh winters. Over 6.5 million refugees in Syria have been forced from their homes by forces loyal to President Bashar al-Assad. And unfortunately, the only thing they'll probably bring with them is the clothes that they are in. I just feel very... well very good that we are potentially giving someone a life. The weekly Knots Mums group set up by Shweta Saxena has been going strong for almost a year. It supports all mothers but mainly those new to Knots who have little or no English. 
Shweta, originally from India, moved to Nottingham last year and says the popularity of the group exceeded her expectations. We began with six members and we launched on 10th of September last year. And that's how our journey began and slowly and gradually it did spread out throughout the city. We now have all sorts of moms in our crew, working moms, single moms, newly arrived one in Nottingham. And we now have 105 members. Initially when I knew nobody in this uh, entire city, it was very horrible. But now when I even step out, I, I'm sure I meet a couple of mums here and then. But Adele says the most dangerous part of his journey wasn't braving the ocean, but the short journey from Calais across the channel when he had to hide in a lorry. I found some chance and some lorry and I, I, I hide from the from police or from the control under it. So when I have this chance, after that, inside the vessel, I, I, I was discovered by someone inside the vessel and he said, please go away from my lorry. So, uh, and then I have, I have this, this love to reach England and to, to be a part of this community and to live as a human being and to try to looking for others' uh, lorry inside the ship. And I have that chance, but this was more difficult than the first one because I have to hang myself between the, the trailer and the cabin. A refugee himself, he's recently returned from the camp in Calais, where he delivered donations which he kept in the pub basement. We took was um, uh, toiletries, uh, food, uh, clothing and tent. Uh, water would inundate the tent and um, it creates kind of like a swamp area, you know, and uh, not having like sewages, not having places where there was uh, doing the basic uh, human needs, you know, you could smell all that in the air. More than a thousand people turned out to show solidarity with the tens of thousands who died struggling to reach Europe this summer. Campaigners are urging councils across knots to resettle more refugees. The call comes after the Prime Minister promised the government will support 20,000 Syrians over the next five years. But is that enough? It's quite a poor number really, only 4,000 a year. Uh, we're the sixth richest country in the world and I'm not sure that that really takes our fair share. But we need to do more, we need to press the government to do more. This is not a situation that's going to be resolved overnight. Suhair is starting college next week and looking forward to building a future for him and his family in Nottingham, a city he's growing very fond of. I want to be a doctor in the future uh, and I want to study in, uh, in the university in the UK here and exactly in Nottingham. This is Fuga Perpetua, meaning always running. The performance captures what it's like to leave your home, not knowing if or when you'll return. It features refugees from all over the world, including Amdani Juma, who's originally from Burundi and now lives in Nottingham. This performance uh, brings a lot of uh, memories, you know, all good and bad memories, but it also reminds me of where I'm come from, bringing art, imagination, humanity, you know, just uh, away from the, the, the actual refugee, you know, border, negative stuff. There's now plans to take the performance to other countries, including Jerusalem next year. Sharon Walia, Knotts TV News.